Hi, welcome back to my Real Cook and Talk show. Okay, it's been a while. It's been a few days since I've uploaded. Uh, I've been hooking away. <clears throat> and so let me just introduce myself to those who just might be tuning in. My name is Annette, and I've been a rug hooker for over 20 years. And we're just sharing with each other through this talk show. We are members on Rug Hooking Daily. And there's a bunch of us who are not members on Rug Hooking Daily that just kind of meet through Cyberland on the show. So that's what this is about. We rug hook solo, but we have a nice little group uh, when we get together. And that's what this is about. I try to share a lot of things about rug hooking and anything else that has to do with the art or the craft, which, you know, encompasses so many things. We have people out there who are quilting, doing needlepoint, embroidery, sewing, you know, they might be doing lots of other crafts too, ceramics and sculpture and, you know, metalsmith and all this other stuff, but it all comes together as art, as craft, and um, that we like to work with our hands and make things, and we love fiber, so it's all good. Everybody's welcome to join me. Like I said, I try to share a little of everything. And I did want to share that the felt rug is finished, so let's take a look at that. Mm. Grab a nice cup of something hot. It's 20 degrees today in the New England area. If you're somewhere warm, good for you. That's all I'm going to say. Okay. So over here, we have the felt rug. And those of you who have been watching religiously know um, that this was just a rug that I felt like doing. I just wanted to, as I worked on it, there was no plan. It was whatever I felt like at the moment putting in, whatever color strip, whatever design. It changed dramatically through the, through the process. Um, so let me just grab the paper, the original paper that we started from, and um, I'll be right back. Okay, so I did some sketching, preliminary sketching that I had shared. Um, that was pretty much it. It was just a random design of leaves. And uh, the inspiration pick is on my blog. And you can see there's a link below the video. I will try to put it in again. But if not, it's letshook.wordpress.com. You do have to put the HTTP and slash slash, and it should bring you right to it. Otherwise, it's on my uh, page on rugcookingdaily.ning. If you look under Annette S., I have little ducks on my icon. You will get to my blog, and my link is right on the front page. Okay, so it started out as that. Let's see if I could do a side-by-side -side here. I don't know if I could. Let's see. So we started out with that. And I'm holding it kind of the wrong way. Let's see. Let's try this again. Okay, so here we go. And see if that works. That's a little better. Okay, so we started here. We ended up here. So as you can see on here, there wasn't much of a background. And that was the fun part of doing this was whatever color I decided to put in, uh, that's what happened. I have my label on the back, as you could see. And like I said, I use a lot of different colors here. I try to keep them all almost in the same level of tone uh, intensity. You know, not I didn't mix brights with, with dull colors. I The only thing I did throw in was to just give it a little bit more interest was I did put in a color that kind of like a gray, something that would give you a little contrast between some of the swirling and you know what? It's really pretty in person, and it's it's just a, a nice little mat, and so it's done, and time for the next rug. So uh, we'll be thinking about what we're doing with that, but um, I just wanted to share a quick little tip, trick, tip, whatever. I was just going to start sewing, and I decided to wait uh, to, just to share with you because I thought it was kind of neat. Uh, I don't know how many of you out there just have regular old scarfs. This is a fleece scarf. It's a man's scarf, I guess. I'm thinking it is. Um, it was never my scarf. But it's just a plain old 
scarf. Um, and as you know, there's a lot of those pretty scarfs that are out that are just one piece and they're like a tube and you wrap them, you can put them around you. So I thought, wouldn't it be cool to just turn this into a tube because it's just way too much scarf for me and nobody else is wearing this. And I really like fleece in the morning when I get out because it's really, really cold, uh, whether it's to walk the dog and so you can just throw it on. So um, there you go, one little stitch at the end, turn it inside out. This is already surged, I'm lucky. This is the way it came. So. Uh, one little stitch and you're going to have a nice little tube scarf and you can do the number eight and pop it over and you've got uh, so don't throw out my point is don't throw out those scarves that you think are kind of like no that's kind of old-fashioned or not in style even the yuckiest of colors can be hand stitched together if it's a, a real big nubby knit scarf and just do a little running stitch and you have a uh, a whole new scarf style and and nice you don't have to wrap it around you and you know the ends are always showing and all that anyway so I just wanted to share that's what I'll be sewing up today and um, something different because I, I need to think about the next rug I do have um, my welcome rug and I think I share it I'll share it right now again just in case I didn't I think I might have but not sure this was the welcome rug that I had stored oh, upside down so sorry <laughs> okay here we go this was the welcome rug that I had started a while ago and um not sure why I'm not putting any rust in the rug but obviously something was going on in my head so I had used this now was I planning to fully turn this under I'm not sure I usually don't so I'm a little confused and at this point this uh, twill tape might be coming off. It's, it's, a, it's a pretty good chance that it's going to be coming off because I don't, yeah, this is not a color that I use in my house, so I'm not sure what I was doing with that. But um, it's a free hand drawing. You know, it's just some leaves and some pretty flowers. Believe it or not, this was supposed to be um, a welcome mat at the foot of my stairs. Um, we have lots of things going on at the foot of my stairs and the triangle rug was there so we were trying to see where this goes we have lots of entrances so we're not sure where but um, it's on monk's cloth and believe it or not monk's cloth works really well with the Anderson frame uh, it pulls it really really taut and tight so if you like working with monk's cloth and you have an Anderson frame and haven't tried it yet um, go ahead I must say though I think you know my all-time favorite probably is the linen but this works really good with yarn. So if you like to work with yarn, Monk's cloth is um, pretty good with yarn. It's comfortable to work with. So uh, there you go. So I haven't really thought of a design yet to work with. Uh, and so I just won't start and do anything. I Not even on the welcome. I have to kind of be kind of ready to do that. So I've been listening to a lot of different things on art. And here's... Um, a really good uh, show. I don't know if you've ever seen Art 21. It's a PBS show. For some reason, it does not come on in my area. I I've been looking for it. I I if it is, I'm missing it constantly. So I'm going to do another search. But anyway, uh, if you have a local library that carries DVDs, and I think most of them do, just go and ask for the Art 21 series. These are great. This is the latest episode. I think it's episode seven. I mean, I'm sorry, season seven. And um, each DVD has a bunch of people on it that just discuss their craft, where they started from, where they presently are, where they plan on going with their, their, their art form. Some paint, some sculpt, some do fiber work. Uh, whether it's sewing or quilting or uh, metal work, you'll see a lot of different installations done. A lot of the artists on here do installations. And uh, for those of you who are not familiar with what an installation is, it's basically a show that they put on or, or well, the installation itself is the show. It might be they erect some sort of display of their artwork and it, it speaks to you and that's what it's meant to do. So 
it might stay someplace for a while, a month, two months, a week, whatever, a day. It depends. It's it's all across the world. They do these great installations and uh, share different ways to speak to the culture about maybe current events, things that are uh, challenges in our society to bring awareness. And uh, that's just one part of this. So anyway, you'll there's I think seven seasons or five seasons, something like that, and you will be amazed at what people are making and doing and just enjoying life and it gives you their background their story how they go ahead and get this done where they started their studios it's very very interesting to see what people are doing and these go all across the world so you'll meet all different types of people doing all different great crafts and it's very very interesting and educational and Gosh, if you're watching with your kids, they would love this if they're into making things because they will see what people from all over the world are doing. And, uh, you know, art kind of binds us all together. A little common language that we could all share and we all take away something different from it. So, again, it's Art 21. Oh, there it is. I didn't even realize it. The Season 7. It is. I, um, season 7, this was, I guess, the first episode. So... Um, there's a lot of them now. So now you know there's at least seven of these out there. And I got this through my local library. And anyway, and just another DVD. I know this isn't rug hooking, but I find rug hooking to be a very part of my everyday meditative life. So I just wanted to share that uh, if you do enjoy listening to people who have a gentle spirit and a kind word to share in bettering yourself and making just your world seem nicer. And uh, that's all good for me. I love that sort of thing. Um, and it's Pima, Ch I think it's Chadron. I'm not sure how to say this. It's a Buddhist name um, that she has chosen. She's an American Buddhist nun. And she is a resident teacher at the Gampo Abbey in Nova Scotia the first Tibetan monastery in North America established for Westerners. She's written a lot of books and audio books, and this is a DVD, so I like to listen or watch while I'm hooking. And she's just a very sweet woman, and she just shares her journey into her level of awareness of the world uh, through a divorce. You know, a divorce can be really difficult, and she shows you how to just... She's just wonderful. That's all I'm going to say about it. She's a very gentle soul and, and brings a lot of um, warmth and kindness to uh, my day. So just something I'm throwing out there for those of you who like to listen while they're hooking or crafting, that sort of thing. So I did have a few more videos that I took out from the library that haven't come in yet, and I will be uh, getting those shortly, I'm sure. Most of them are all on art. So, like I said, art is part of rug hooking. You can't deny it. It's there. And we, we love our rugs to make us feel wonderful after we've hooked them. We want to look at them and see that all our handiwork is produced. You know, each little loop together will produce this great picture. And whether it's a rug on the floor or a small mat on a table or a wall hanging, it is eventually as, and essentially something very visual, even though it is textural, that's the beauty of it. You want to touch it and it's soft and it's nice and it's got these beautiful colors. And if you're working with these beautiful hand dyed wools or hand spun yarn, you will produce the most interesting, beautiful art and, and wall hangings and rugs. And again, they're functional art. You know, a rug, I, I walk on my rugs and they look great, and so I'm not afraid to do that. But if you are meticulous and you want to keep it somewhere up high, away from the little critters and little feet and little drops of um, juice and sort of like that, absolutely go ahead and put it up on your wall because then everybody can enjoy it uh, and it'll look great for years to come. And that's about it. Um, just, like I said, in the middle of wondering where I'm going next with my rug hooking what rug will I work on? Uh, will it be small? Will it be a little larger? I have a nice piece of linen already cut and surged, so I'm not sure if I want to work on a big rug and take up a lot of time or maybe do a smaller mat because I really, really enjoyed the felt rug. I thought that was uh, 
I could see it work up quick, and that's the beauty of the small mats. They do work up quick. But then you're faced with, okay, now it's the next rug. So, you know, it, you have to pace yourself and see what mood you're in. And, um, yeah, so I'm going to be thinking of that and where I'm going with that. So I just want to say thank you for sticking with me. I, I was gone for a few days, and I was just hooking away on the felt rug. And um, for those of you who haven't really gotten a chance to see another person's rug up close, finished on the background, I'm going to show that to you because that to me is very interesting. New people, new rug hookers are, get I think, a little nervous. I know I did with the, the finishing part, the binding part of the rug. And, you know, no fear. This is, uh, to me, this is the most easiest way. Now, you know, other rug hookers will beg to differ and say, well, that's not the best way, and that it might be the easiest way, but if this is for a wall where this could easily go, or a tabletop, this is absolutely, totally acceptable to me. And like I said, you just want to sew on your binding from the front, front uh, and then fold it back, okay, and this is what the back looks like. You just fold it over and hand stitch. That's all this is. It's just all hand stitched all around. Gets a little clumsy over here, and I cover that clumsy part with my label. And that label, believe it or not, it's just glued on with um, a really good fabric glue right on the bottom. I'm not concerned about it. It's, yeah, it's not going anywhere. I have had I have used fabric glue, and it's actually called Aileen's Fabric Fusion. Let me just grab it. For those of you who might be a little unfamiliar with it, I use that. And this stuff, I literally, I have things that have been on this and thrown in the wash, and they are still on there. So you know what? I'm not too concerned because this isn't going in the wash, and I think if anybody did want to clean this if they stained it it's just going to be spot clean so I you know if, if I'm saying of a small mat so if you're going to do it don't worry on a small mat it's 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 not a big deal so basically that's where we're at and so like I said I put a little label on there you go you can see that and it just shows you know who made it it's an original by Annette S that's usually what I go by Annette S and uh it's done. It's done. I'm glad, and I'm glad you were part of it, and I'm glad you could kind of, I could show the new new rug hookers uh, to just be free with your rug hooking. Don't get all caught up in the exact design, and, and you know, it, it'll change, and it'll move with you, and it'll grow with you, and the design will, you know, kind of morph into something a little different. It's okay. It's okay. In the end, you're going to be like, wow, that came out beautiful. Over here, if you could see, somebody might say, well, look, you missed a stitch. No, I did a lot of that on purpose. I left little spaces because I wanted it not to look like a little commercial rug. I wanted it to look handmade, and I wanted it to look like these were almost disappearing, really. That's the idea of it, too, that they were kind of not clear to be seen. So, you know what? you got to try your different effects and see what works for you and... Um, this was fun. It was a fun project. So give yourself a chance to do a fun project. Uh, you know, we all plan out our rugs and we get the color schemes going. And that is all wonderful because you do produce beautiful, beautiful rugs that you're very pleased with that'll bring you a lot of pleasure for many years to come when they're well thought out. I absolutely believe in that. But once in a while, if you just want to get like that little creative thing going, don't be afraid to just go for it. Just try it. Just have fun with it. It's a small mat. <laughs> It took me, what, a couple of weeks, I think we were working on this together, and uh, you watching me, and it was fun. And, you know, the different colors, as I look at it, um, what I love about it is, is that because it's so random, your eyes are going to all different parts and seeing almost like little rug designs in each part of it. And it's, it's so neat. It's not predictable, is what I'm saying. And um, I like that about this particular little uh, uh, rug that I worked on, this little experiment, so to speak. And I think sometimes you got to just do that. Just go out there, draw a little design on a piece of burlap or, or linen and just start hooking away and enjoy it and put colors in that you want to see together and see how it turns out. If it doesn't, you rip it all out. 
So uh, I just want to say thank you. Thank you for joining me today. And I will get back to some rug hooking shortly. Uh, just give me some time. I'm trying to either think of something or work on the welcome rug. I, I'm not sure quite yet what I want to do, but uh, it might be something a little different, a little abstract rug uh, of just color and no design at all, just a lot of colors in it. So we'll see about something like that. It's kind of been on my head to do. So um, that's something I feel like I want to work on. So I just want to wish you a, a really good day. Uh, take the time to just sit and look at, if you have completed a rug, the beautiful handiwork that you have done and created something so beautiful and wonderful for you, for your family, for just the time that you were able to spend on it, that you were just calm and hopefully, sometimes we get a little stressed with our rug hooking, okay? <laughs> so it's not all so calm, but that's what it was meant to be. So uh, no worries, no worries. It's it's a rug. It's let's not take it so crazy that we work ourselves up. Just have fun with it, enjoy it. You don't like it, rip it out. It's not a big deal. The, your linen isn't going to fall apart or get angry with you. No, 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 no. no. So uh, just thank you. Thank you for joining me. Thank you for tuning in. Thank you for being a part of the group and watching us solo hookers out there. Might be more comfortable being home alone, but like this gives us our little chance to come together and share in doing something uh, that we love to do in the privacy of our own home and our own little space. And um, that's a really good thing. So I just want to thank you for joining me. I want to wish you a good day. Stay well and happy hooking.